guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another show of ours today. We've got the FAI Cup preview show round of 16. Luke McQuillan's with me here today. Luke, what's the crack? I suppose your team are still in it. All right. Yeah, thank God. Well, we'll see for how long. That's probably the tired around. We'll get to that, obviously. That's going to be the tired around. I think. Yeah. That's probably the last fixture we'll get to. But the first fixture we will talk about on Friday night is Derry City and Cork City. And obviously, Cork City are flying in the first division. And a couple of bad results have gone against Galway, which has really favoured Cork, and they're in an absolutely brilliant position. Uh, this is a free hit for them here, I think. Derry City are a side that I would say have aspirations to maybe lift the trophy, actually, um, at the end of the season. But, um, yeah, I mean, anything can happen on a day. And this is one of these fixtures where a lot of people might say this could be a difficult one for Derry, particularly with Derry generally better away from home this season. So you'd imagine Cork will go and sit in. I still think Kerry, or Kerry, do you mean? I still think Derry, there's a big, maybe next season Kerry will be in this. There's a big yeah, gap between Derry City and Cork City um, in reality. But on the day, and we've seen results with first division teams, obviously Waterford beat Pat, Sligo beating on the Wexford actually as well. And actually Cork themselves winning three during Sligo last year as well. Um, it's one that Derry can't take lightly, Luke, I would say. No, it's not. Um, it's going to be a tough one, I think, for Derry. I think, you know, Cork are obviously top of the first division with seven points clear at the minute. So, you know, they're in a really good position in the league. And look, they're, they're gonna, they're, there's going to be no pressure on them in the cup because obviously their main focus is going to be getting back into the Premier Division this season. So I think for themselves, like, it is a chance for them to be, because I think there is pressure on Derry, to be honest, to win the cup, maybe, you know what I mean? Because the thing is with Derry, like, their squad is just so good and, you know, they're con constantly adding to the their squad and putting money into their squad so you'd expect Derry to be there thereabouts in the cup so if they could if they were to lose here it'd be a big shock like you know um because Cork are but that's the thing as well Cork going it but no pressure on them so I think uh could go either way this could be one that could go either way I think but I would fancy Derry just to see off the, the quality would, would just have enough quality to see off Cork but you know these are the sort of games Cork would want to be playing in if they you know, these are the sort of teams that they're most likely going to be playing against next season. So um, it's something for them to get used to again, you know what I mean? Because they've had the what, last two or two seasons in the in the first division. So, you know, look, it's, it's, it's going to be a big one for them. So um, it, it's it's an interesting game. It's a very interesting game. It's a, it's a good trip good trip for Cork as well to take, you know what I mean? It's, a, it's not close for them, but um, I'm sure they'll travel in decent numbers like they have all season. So, um, you know, it has, it's set to be a good tie, this one. Yeah, yeah, I think from Derry's point of view, one of the things that Derry, I think, actually, is the fact that you're still not too sure what their actual best 11 is. You know what I mean? You don't necessarily no. play your best 11 every week. <clears throat> you don't necessarily get a chance to do that every week. But still, if I was to sit down and probably write in paper, I'd probably struggle with some of the positions for Derry. I'm not too sure. I know that Boyce back soon as well. I think he's been on the bench, actually, so he might be back. Maybe they'll play him in this game. Yeah. So he's, he's been a big miss for them as well. But uh, I still think at times in the attacking areas where there's a lot of good names... Um, it's not just fully clicking for them they're doing well in the league but if you want to get further with them it's not fully clicking with them yet though No I agree with that like I think <clears throat> I think as well it's, it's you know the it, it's it, it, they haven't had as you said the best time 11 you know the different injuries and all like the Duffy and all you know what I mean so um, McGonagall's like been hot and cold you know what I mean Akintunde's the same you know what I mean I think Akintunde is a good player and he's, he has improved as the week's gone on but I still think you know you don't really know what you're getting from him you know what type of way um, so it's, it's an interesting like as well I think isn't he Brandon Cavan is a little yeah. bit like that as well yeah they've a lot of that but you know, I think with the injuries of Michael Duffy and McElhenney at the start of the season and all, it didn't it didn't really help them, you know what I mean? Um, because these are lads that they brought in that they thought were going to have an instant impact um, and it didn't because of injuries and all that and, and whatnot. But yeah, look, I think I agree with what you're saying there. I do think that like it, they could be doing better going forward. Um, defensively, I don't think they've really any issues, you know what I mean? I think they're starting to, you know, defensively be a lot sounder um, with Connolly and that coming in and you know, McJanet is looking all right. He's been doing okay recently. I've always had my doubts about McJanet. Um, I think Boyce is as well. Look, look, they have a lot of players there, you know what I mean, that could easily play for any real team in the league, you know what I mean? And, and they're not really, they, they might not be making the starting 11 for Derry one week. So, yeah, it's tough on Higgins, but it, it's not a bad complaint for him either, you know what I mean, because he's got so much to choose from. But, you know, that can also affect different things with squad harmony and all that, um, having so many players to such a high level. Um, sometimes it can be really good sometimes it can make players play even better but sometimes it can 
it can it can cause not you know it could cause a bit of tension or whatever. But um, it's an interesting one. It is an interesting one to talk about because I think the fact I think uh, attacking like they're they've shown promise of what they can do. Um, but some games they can they can be better going forward than other games. It it is interesting. He's gonna win it. <clears throat> I I think Derry will win it. I think they'll win it two one. Yeah, I think they'll win it as well. Just to bear in mind again, once again, all these games, extra time and penalties. So there's bound to be one or two penalties, I think. Uh, Galway needs to be, this is a really interesting one at uh, Eamon DC Park because you could argue Galway are struggling a little of late in terms of results they are. Yeah. They're second the league, but in terms of their latest results they are. And UCD have probably improved a little bit in terms of their results because they have picked up a couple of wins of late, a couple of narrow losses and stuff like that. So... Uh, a lot of people kind of look at this and probably say, ah, Galway will definitely win. I don't know, though. I don't know. I mean, Conor McCormick's been out for Galway as well, and he's been a huge loss, actually, with him out of the side. I'm not he sure does, yeah. whether he'll be available for this game or not. So his leadership is brilliant, is uh, undeniable in the middle of the park. So uh, it'll be an interesting one. It's an interesting test for Galway, really, in a sense. Isn't it more so than UCD? Because UCD are almost expected to go back down, and Galway are looking to really, if they don't go up, to be you know, the team in the first division. So, interesting one, I think. Um, I don't know. I, I find it difficult to call, actually, I'll be honest. This could go all the way, actually. Yeah, this could be one of the toughest, one of the toughest ties to call this one. Um, because you don't really know what to expect in this one because, you know, you've got UCD who have, input, like, their performances in the last couple of weeks, they've definitely improved. I think since yeah. that, I watched them that day uh, in draw, I thought they were very good that day. And I think since then, they've they've put in some good performances, you know, they good result against Finn Hearts and that, you know what I mean? And, you know, they, they, they're they getting win, they're getting more wins, um, wins against Sligo and wins against Finn Harps and that in the last couple of weeks. So they're, they're getting results on the board, they're getting points and that. Um, you know, between them and Finn Harps, it's, it's sort of like, a, I think uh, Keith said the other day, it's like snakes and ladders, one's going up and the other one's going down, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's funny, but um, it, it, it's, it's an interesting one. This is a very tough game. I think Galway had a bad loss there last week against Bray. Um, I don't think anyone was expecting that, you know what I mean? Um, but you can sort of see that the obviously with Conor McCormick out and how key he's been to Galway since he came to the club, really. His experience is, is unmatched and some could argue that he could still be possibly playing in the Premier Division, you know what I mean? Um, so, like, he's a brilliant player for them and when you don't have a player like that in your squad, it, it can can affect you. So, yeah, look, it's an interesting one. It'd be interesting if he is back for this one. I don't know um, what, what what's the story with him, but... Um, very tough game to call this one very very tough game like I think either team could win this one because you know you don't really know what to expect in this one you could expect Gal- Galway could easily go out and win comfortably UCD could win comfortably you just wouldn't know it's, it's a, this is a tough game to call as well yeah I'm going to go for UCD in penalties what are you saying <laughs> I'm going to go Galway I'll go yeah. Galway yeah I'll go UCD uh, Luke and United take on Bowes. This is actually in Denyman Park, though. Um, Luke have actually good facilities, to be fair to them. Obviously, they won their last round, and uh, yeah. Dave Mooney's player coach. I wonder if he'll play in this game. Ex Shamrock Rovers. It'd be interesting to see if he played and scored uh, over to Block G and uh, at the Bowes end. But uh, yeah, Luke can have. Uh, do you remember Marco Chendea? He used to actually play for Bowes, a former Bowes player. So he is. But anyway, he's with them now. Um, it's very difficult to see, isn't it? Luke can get a result here. Let's be honest. Dalyman Park as well. Um, no matter how Bowles haven't been playing very well or whatever, there's a massive gap between non-league clubs and and league clubs, really. So, put it this way: I think if Bowles somehow went out of this, I think Keith Lock would be looking at his job job being gone the next morning. You know, I know that sounds extreme, but based on what's been happening there and that, but I do think a Luke and result is extreme. Um, and honestly, I, I can't see. I can't see. I not even if they're a bit nervous. I can't see anything but a comfortable Bowls win here. Yeah, it's gonna be comfortable for them, and um, it has to be. You know what I mean? Because it's it's look. Bowls' performances last couple of weeks have been dreadful. Mm. To be honest, like they've they've just not not been too um not been up to the standards that they probably want. Like they had that. We obviously mentioned the little the squad new squad bounce that they got, and then once it sort of. They sort of fell off a little bit, um, and then obviously like last week against Shells, I'd be disappointed if they didn't win that game. Like we spoke about, but for Luke and it's it's probably just about it's just about enjoying. It, I think for them, um, you know, I think they'll go into it and look. It's a, it's a nice stadium to be playing in, um, you know, there'll be a good crowd there, and um, be good for the players and and their families and all, and it'll be good for that. But 
you'd expect both just to go out and be professional and do a job here because it's there is a huge gap between even the you know the first division and the Leinster Saint League, the non-league clubs, should I say? Um, but to even mention a Premier Division club who's full time, you know what I mean? Um, there's always been that question if balls are full time or not, but hey, they are full time, you know. What I mean? wages. Yeah, good contracts, you know. What I mean, it'd be a full time, full time sort of setup that they they'd yeah. be going by. But um, you'd expect balls to be comfortable here, and you'd expect them to win it very. But look. Football's football, and you know, stranger things have happened, but you know, I think uh, Boz will win this country. Yeah, same. I'll actually be at this game as well. Uh, Wexford and Dundalk, uh, Wexford have had one defeat in 11 attempts, but that was last time out. Actually, they've they were doing well, but they're kind of falling off a little bit. Dundalk, obviously, his away record isn't half because their home record this season. Um, it is a potential banana skin, Luke, I guess. Uh, Wexford, a brilliant result in the last round. But I just think the dark are a bit too professional and a bit too uh, rugged might be the word. I know they had the bad defeat to Shamrock Rovers and we expressed and highlighted some of their weaknesses at the moment in defence. That might be a problem because Wexford do have players that can uh, cause issue, that's for sure. Um, yeah. I do think this would be a big surprise though if Wexford were to win it. But I don't think it would be easy for Dundalk. How have you seen it? Yeah, I don't think it'll be easy for Dundalk, but like you'd expect them to be similar to Bowles, to go out and be professional, get a job done and get out of there because it's look, it's not an easy place to go to. Um, you know, it's definitely not an easy place to go to. And I think Dundalk probably will be sore after against Shamrock Rovers because as we, as you said, we we did highlight their their weaknesses at the minute with the high line and playing the high line with players who probably don't have the pace to be doing that, you know what I mean? Especially without Andy Boyle and that there, you know what I mean. Even with Andy Boyle, I still don't think they'd have they should be playing that high line because I don't I don't think he has the I don't think he's a fast player. Look, he's one of the best defenders in the league, but mm. at the same time, I don't think he's got the pace to be playing that high line. Look, he'll be back in the fold now this week, so um they'll be delighted to have him back. Um, especially like there's a few tough league games and that coming up. So look, they want to go far in the cup. I don't think I think the season they've had is excellent, but. If they won the cup or or to a final of the cup semi final, I think it's good. That it just adds to the season that probably Dundalk have had. Um, but Stevie will be looking at winning it, um, and they've got the squad to win it. Um, so look, it, it's it's it is going to be a banana skin this one. They've got to get through it. Um, so I see a Dundalk win, but I don't think it's going to be very comfortable. Um, I think Wexford will cause some problems, but you know you'd expect Dundalk here to just just to see out this game. Yeah, I think the same. Two one done, Doc. Uh, Bonaghy and I just play God Shelburne, and actually they're actually home in this game, Luke, which is fantastic for Bonaghy. New Arch Park, I believe, is the name of the ground they play at, and uh, it's interesting at Bonaghy because there's a lot of former Finn Harps players like Tony McNamee, Connor Black, Michael Doherty, and Garrett Harkin. So there's a bit of experience there. Yeah. They did beat Pike six 0 in the last round as well. So you're kind of looking at them, thinking to yourself, you know what I mean? Uh, must be that bad, but there's a lot of experience there, as I mentioned before. And Shelburne go up here to a ground where you know it mightn't be in the best condition. I'm not saying it is, but it mightn't be in the best condition. It's up in Donegal, as we all know as well, and they'd be unfamiliar to this ground. And I think yeah. they help Bonaghy, but at the same time, once again, the quality and fitness levels Shelburne have as well. I know Luke Byrne will be out with a hamstring, and O'Driscoll's clearly going to be out after that head injury. So they might have a few things in defence, but. I'm trying to pay, paint the picture that Bonaghy might be able to do well in this game. As I said, they have a lot of former Finn Harps players, so they do know players that know the league quite well. But at the same time, I'm not convincing myself that I'm going to say they're going to win it either. <laughs> no, no, I can't imagine. Um, look, you mentioned they, they do have some experienced players. Um, but look, you look at the quality Shells have and the quality that they're possessing this season. Um, I think they've improved as the season's gone on, as we've said numerous times and look I know they've probably had two bad results well not bad results I think Bowles was a decent result yeah. they'll, be, they'll be happy with the result they got against Bowles oh, yeah. um, but obviously the loss against Drop before, um would have been a poor result for them but look they're, they're, they're in a position now in the league where you, you're you're expecting them to stay up now they will most likely stay up because they're in a the good position and look they'll want to push up as high as possible and I don't think they will get any the air, like, surely Surely the fancy a cup. That's what I'm saying. Duff, yeah. Duff, Duff has said before that he does want a cup run and how if he won the cup, it'd be the best. Thing, best it would uh, outclass everything he's done in his career or something. You know what I mean? But uh, look, see, I think as a manager, it's it's an interesting one. I've always, I've, I've seen that's that before. Fair enough, they say yeah. like, his whole career, you know, he won a chat. He won, sorry, 
won a Premier League title with, with Chelsea. He's played at World Cups and stuff like that. But uh, if he means it as a exactly. manager, no, I... if he means it overall, come on, Dave. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think I I think as well. I, I it's not that's not the first time I've ever heard a manager say that. I think it might have been was a Steven Gerrard or something said it when he won the league with Rangers. He said it's the best achievement he's had in his career because it's it was something like that because it's when you're a manager, it's a lot different than a player. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but look, look, it's uh, I've gone off. I've gone off a bit off topic here, but what I'm trying to say is I think that Shells will be looking at a cup run. Um, they've had they've sort of the two ties they've got have probably been favourable ties. Um, you know they're avoiding the Premier Division, Premier Division clubs, um, at the minute. So look, you'd expect them to go through here comfortably enough, um, and then see where they are then uh, into the was a quarter final then if they go through. Yeah. So yeah. then again, you, you go through there. You're you're two games. You win this game and this weekend, then you're two games away from a cup final. Do you know what I mean? So um, huge game, huge game for them. So uh. Look, it's um, it's an interesting one. So, uh, look, they want to just, just they just want to go through this one and, and see where it takes them, and you know, after that, then see where they are. But um, yeah, I, I do expect Shells to win this game. Yeah, I think comfortable enough, three 0 or something uh, on Saturday yeah. there on Friday. Malahai take on Waterford, and I suppose Waterford after beating Pats deserved a fair favourable draw. You'd argue, uh, with such a good win, could actually get Pats and then Shamrock Rovers or something. Be like, come on, wouldn't it? But there you go. They're in Malahai. I mean, he's been playing at Malahai as well. Uh, which again, it, it, it's a little help because these teams are not used to playing at these grounds. So I do think every little helps in that sense. But Waterford, obviously, with the news of a new ownership, uh, Andy Piley, by the way, that's how you pronounce it in case anyone's watching, I found out uh, yesterday, uh, obviously took over the club. And there's a bit of optimism going out around Waterford. You're never sure, Waterford, but there is optimism there. And uh, looked at the team and the players that are good enough to go and win this well. Could you imagine, by, by the way, just hypothetically, if they won at St. Pat's and were knocked out by Malahide, it would be such a Waterford thing, though, wouldn't it? But um, you have to fancy them strongly, wouldn't you? <laughs> Do you know who the Malahide uh, goalkeeper coach is? Who's that? Colin McCabe. Oh, it's Colin McCabe? No way. You're serious? There you go. There's the goalkeeper coach. Yeah. Brilliant, yeah. There's the goalkeeper coach. I'm going to go game and play for Drotted on Saturday, um, uh, Sunday. <laughs> I hope not. I hope he doesn't play. For <laughs> there you go. We, would, we, need, we, we need him 100% on uh, Sunday, so we do. Um, but look, it's uh, which is brilliant because it, he's obviously done. I think he's doing his coaching badges as well. Um, at the minute, so this is a good experience for him to be in with Malahide, and you know they're playing against Waterford and that. So, um, it's brilliant. You know what I mean? And obviously, I, I hope he's not playing enough for them on on, on Saturday. Yeah, right. <laughs> and he's, yeah. uh, you would have thought, though, funny enough, he might have a little bit of information on Waterford as well. You'd like to think he knows. Yeah, exactly. But he. He's ex- experienced around the League of Ireland as well, so I think that's that, that's good for for Malahide, you know what I mean? And, and plus, he's a brilliant lad, like you know what I mean? And um, he's got good football and knowledge as well, so he's he's brilliant to have in there for Malahide. But on this game, you know, you can't really see by Waterford, can you? Though, like, look, I know you mentioned the the place where Malahide play, and to be honest with you, state of the art facilities, Gannon Park is it's unbelievable. The pitch is there. Pitches, pitches there are brilliant. Um, very, very good. I've played played a good few times in Malahide, and um, the pitches are just perfect. Like, do you know what I mean? Um, like they're up to League of Ireland standard pitches. You know what I mean? So, um, so they they actually probably be better than some of the pitches in the League of Ireland, to be honest. Um, but look, yeah, you, you can't really see by Waterford here. Um, I expect Waterford to win this one and get through to the next round. Same, yeah. Minute University then take on Trinity United. Minute just about beat uh, Salt Hill Devon in the last round. This is actually being played in Baldonnell actually as well. So uh, they can't play this in Minute University as well apparently. So it's in uh, Baldonnell. Yeah. So it's a funny home tie. But uh, yeah, Trinity. I mean, Minute we've seen them cause a shock last year to be Cove, didn't they? Didn't they be Cove? Cove, yeah, to be Cove last year. Um, I'm not sure if they can do it again. I don't think they're as strong as last year. I know I said that before. But um, Treaty side, they're very up and down in the first division. They beat Cork City 2-0, and then the next week they lost 2-0 to Athlone. So that tells you your own story. I think they're the type of team that are open to be beaten by the weaker sides as such. But um, out of the one so far, this is the one I think is the biggest threat, though, of a, of a, a shock or a surprise or whatever you want to call it. But I'm still going for Treaty. Yeah, I mean, you can't it's see what it's true. I'm not like... <laughs> One non league club has got to beat someone. Come on. Um, it didn't happen the last time, I never played safe. 
<laughs> no, look, you can't probably again. It's, it's similar, like to what we said about the rest of the game. You can't really treat you at the minute, um, especially against Manu. Like, um, if it was the Manu, Manu, Manu seemed to be a bit different than last season, um, in the cups. You know what I mean? Like, they did get some decent results, and then sort of obviously they played. I think they played balls and 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 got beaten, but. Um, they only got by Salt Hill, like, and you know, you wouldn't really know how good Salt Hill are, and they are any good at all. So, um, they only got just about got by, but look, they'll be delighted to, to, to have gotten to where they are in the, in the cup. Um, good opportunity for them, though. Um, it is a good opportunity for them, but um, again, I can't see by treaty in this one, but um, it's going to be an interesting one. This one, actually, this will be a, a very interesting tie. Yeah, actually, I made an error there. They actually yeah. beat Villa FC 2 1. It was Malahide who got by Salt Hill, on, if you remember. On oh, that's right. Yeah. That's my mistake. So, yeah, anyway, we'll uh, continue on. And I suppose the final game, it is uh, it's not just because you're a Toronto fan, but it is the title around by a mile. Like Derry and Cork is probably the next closest, but you're, it's the only odd Premier Division tie, to be fair. And uh, uh, yeah, Shamrock Rovers are the best team in the league. It's obvious. Um, but they've been beaten by Toronto this season already and drew at Tallis Stadium. Toronto have been very good as a highlight before ahead in the game this year. Uh, Rovers have that match in Europe. Unlikely to go through, but it's there. Um, if you're Shamrock Rovers, though, it's not a tie you, you would have rubbed your hands with. Obviously, if you're Toronto, it's not a tie you would have rubbed your hands with either. Let's get that right as well. But <laughs> it's, not a, it's not an easy tie for, for Shamrock Rovers either. And... Um, you know, as I said, Drotted have made it very difficult for teams at home this season. I always think the key, I think we spoke about this the other day, the key when you play Shamrock Rovers is if Rovers get the first goal, I'd love to see a statistic because uh, every time they get the first goal, it seems they win. At worst, they draw. Um, and the games they've lost this season, for example, have been mainly one nilers. So, you know what I mean? That's what happens again. And the game actually in United Park or heading the game park last time out, Rovers probably played well in the first 20 minutes and didn't take advantage. And they got caught as such, you know what I mean? But on another day, they could go and put in a goal or two in the first 20 minutes and the, the tie could be over. So, look, it's going to be an interesting game. It's going to be a great atmosphere ahead of the game park. Don't, no doubt about it. Again, this is on Sunday at five o'clock. Looking forward to it myself. I'm also going to this game as well. How have you seen it overall, Luke? <laughs> um, oh, look, it's... it's... It's probably not the team you want to be playing in the in the cup, but mm. if you if you have any aspirations of going far in the cup, you've got to got to get by these teams. And I said that when the when the when it was drawn. Look, obviously, I would have preferred to have gotten you know a, a favourable tie, but look, later. Yeah, you can't always. Can't, what? Get Rovers later in the final or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look, you, you can't always get get what you want in them sort of tie in, in sort of cup draws. But look, John, I've got to go out and just got to get out Rovers and and you know cause them problems and capable of doing it they are capable of doing it um you know i think we that game and heading the game park yeah rovers started very well but they had a few chances early on but after that they did nothing and you know drada got the goal that was needed and rovers didn't really cause drada any problems after that um a lot of crosses into the box and that you know what i mean and and there was nothing really like a few close ones but there was nothing really that you would be saying geez rovers could have got that game there but and then obviously in tala i think drada the better team so look, um, going into this one, it, it's going to be an interesting tie. Um, I'm very looking forward to it. Uh, can't wait. It's it's um, it's I think it's looking close to being a sellout as well, which is which is excellent. Um, you know the tickets are ticket sales for for are flying in, and we're couple, still a couple of days away. So which is brilliant to see because there is the interest there for it, and um, you know I think it's it has set to be a brilliant atmosphere. And I see and the lad the the ultras were telling everyone to get in and that and get in early. So look, if they can make it. A, Make it a, a hostile place, which they have many times this season. Um, it could be difficult for Rovers, but um, look, you've just got to you've got to go into it with with confidence um, and and give give Rovers a game and, and and see where see where it takes you. But um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And um, definitely the tide around. And look, you know what I mean. If we can get a win here, I, I, I'll be I'll be already booking me t- I'll be already booking my ticket for uh, the, the Aviva Stadium. No, I won't have any messing. Kino, Kino does that every year, by the way, in the first round. But there you go. Uh, before the first round. Uh, in the first round. Uh, yeah. yeah. This year after the first round. But anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, draw the, look, look, let's get it right here, to be fair. Drott have done well against Rovers this season. There's no doubt about it. But they have to be at their very best, don't they? Because Rovers, when they played Tallis Stadium, not the one in the United Park, but they were kind of, it felt almost like they were there for the taking a little bit on the night after their Euro- I know they have a European game on Thursday as well. 
but they were coming back and they were still kind of in the tie. There was a sense that this one, yeah, yeah, sense that the tie is over against Fair and Barish, and you almost sense that by the performance and result against Dundalk because they seemed fully focused on that. You know what I mean? Um, and Rovers are a team that you know it's all right winning the league. You, know, you want to win everything actually when you're when you're that good in relative terms. You do want to try and win everything, I and mean, you want to make hay while the sun shines. If you can win cups and leagues, great. And the other side of it is we played that already. The other side of it is is the worry is, I suppose, from a draw perspective, but from a Rovers perspective, they'd want to do this. If Rovers get an early goal, it could nearly kill the tie. If a habit of any team to play against if they score a goal, it almost kills you. I've seen them even play Pats. Tala Stadium there and early on in the season. They won one nil, but uh, as soon as they got the goal, the game was over. It just had that whole sense, and you don't want that to happen in a cup tie. I don't think it would yeah. happen because it's a other type of team well capable of battling on, but you could concede a second goal and suddenly you're in trouble. But uh, it's, I, I think it's, it's a different it's, call, the, call. The only thing I'm thinking, Rovers will say to themselves, look, we haven't beaten Drotter this season and we should be beating Drotter. That's what they'll be saying. I do sense they're going to come out and kind of go, do you know what I mean? Have their A game on, like which will be difficult for Drada if their A game is is obviously there. Oh, the look, the levels they produce is it's it's frightening. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, and you know they they continue to it's 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 mental. Like I I was I thought like I thought Dundalk were going to beat them the other day. I won't lie to you. And then they they I didn't expect that though. I I I can't remember no. what I said a narrow Rovers win. I had narrow Rovers win. But for Drada, like it, it, it for Drada, they've just got to go into this one and you know be full of confidence. And I have to mention as well, Dale Rooney signed a new contract there yesterday. It was it was brilliant, brilliant business for the club, like to get him tied down for next season, which is excellent by the way. And just to know it's a bit off topic, but it's brilliant because for himself now he's going to be playing with a lot more confidence, and he has been a player with full of confidence. So to have that deal behind him now is it, it, going to kick him on, I think, because he's been excellent for us and. You know, hopefully he can he can add to his uh, goal tally now on, on this weekend. But look, it's 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 an interesting game. It's the sort of game you want to be playing in, of course. Um, you know, home five o'clock kick off on a Sunday. Um, you know, fans right behind Drada. So let's hope. Yeah, I know you hate doing this, but what are you gonna go for? I, I I'll go Rovers uh after extra time. Yeah, I think Rovers as well, I'll be honest. I'll go 2-1, though. But, um, yeah. look, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Definitely the tie of the weekend. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll leave it there. Guys, let us know what you think. Give us a few predictions. Um, are we going to get any wrong? Are we going to get many wrong? What do you think yourself? Subscribe to the channel. Hit your bell notification button. And thanks again for watching. Cheers, Luke.